as in the British assault on the Falklands, Israeli forces were personally led into battle by their officers. On the rear, Israeli artillery shelled the most stubborn Syrian strongpoints with pinpoint accuracy. Syrian panic was heightened by Israeli airstrikes. It was a costly advance, but by the end of the first day, the Israelis had broken through at several key points. From then on, the Syrians abandoned their carefully constructed defences and withdrew rapidly. Next day, the last of this war, the Israeli columns moved swiftly on to the strategic Syrian town of Kunetra. They entered it after a brief hour and a half's firefight on the afternoon of the sixth day. The Syrian army had collapsed in less than 27 hours of bitter fighting. From here, the road to Damascus was wide open and the Syrian capital at their mercy. Only intervention by the United Nations halted the rout. It had cost the Israelis 115 dead. The Syrians lost about a thousand. Their outstanding victory gave the Israelis defense in depth for the first time in their history. Instead of being threatened by neighbors, Israeli forces now occupied the areas from which those threats were mounted. Now they pose the threat themselves. A matter for celebrations. <laughs> The celebrations obscured military shortcomings as they overlooked the fact that their achievements were due more to Arab negligence than their own superiority. As a result, the Arabs who now gave in learned more from their mistakes than the Israelis did. And that was something the Israelis would discover to their cost within six years in the Yom Kippur War of 1973. Refusal to trade conquered lands for security guarantees fueled the refugee problem that would return to haunt Israel time and again, even until today. Hundreds of thousands of uprooted Palestinians were on the move, many the same people that had fled the Israeli War of Independence 20 years earlier. With Arab countries refusing to absorb them, many professed a desire to live in their homelands in peace. They are happy to live anywhere in peace. Yes. Oh. Everything that they need, peace. Everywhere. Nothing except peace. Israel's Moshe Dayan publicly tried to allay their fears, but privately, most Israelis feared sabotage campaigns if the refugees stayed. I'm not doing anything to stop them by force. I don't think that anyone should stop anyone if he wants to leave the country. I'm trying to find out why they leave, and if they are scared or something like that, then uh, to, to uh, leave that, to, to uh, ascertain them that there is no reason to leave. But if they do want to leave for a personal reason, then we do not stop them by force. The refugees, however, continue to struggle over the Allenby Bridge into unoccupied Jordan. Whatever the promises, they believed Israeli occupation would be harsh and their plight highlighted the problem of statelessness and increased the appetite for revenge that led to the Yom Kippur War of 1973.